Dixon of Doc Green. Ah, good evening. When you're a copper, you know, you're always on duty and it's a funny thing, you seem to find more trouble when you're supposed to be resting than you do otherwise. Like when young Andy and Mary got married. Oh, yeah, didn't you know? Oh, yes, they got tied up a couple of weeks ago. When they got married, I had a real basin of trouble. Seems to follow me around. Yeah. Well, that's a lot, I think. You sure your missus won't mind having her for the night, Sarge? She's looking forward to it. Do you know then, George? <laughs> There's nothing an old married woman likes better than fussing over a young bridegroom. Uh, no, do you think <laughs> another young fellow's been safely trapped, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it sound so gloomy. <laughs> so Mary's sewn you up for the night, has she, Andy? <laughs> yep, refuses to have me near the place. Anyway, she's got Peggy, one of her bridesmaids, coming to stay, and another girl. They'll be chasing around all over the house. I'm glad to get out. <laughs> ah, lovely, George. Right? That's lovely. <laughs> Now, what about these cuttings you've always promised me? Well, you've them right away. Come on, come out in the garden and get them yourself. Right. You too, Tom. Right. <laughs> there we are. Oh, George. Hey. Oh, you two carry on. I'll be with you later. What is it, Andy? Well, uh, in case I don't get another chance to speak to you alone, I just want to say... Well, thanks, you know, George. No, you've got nothing to thank me for, Andy. Oh, come off it. You took me in here when I was a raw young copper. Well, you still are. <laughs> no, I, I'm serious, George. You took a back seat more than once, says I could take all the credit. And I don't forget, George. I, I don't want you to think I do. I'm very grateful. Well, anybody would have done the same, Andy. I'm not so sure. Well, it hasn't all been one-way traffic, you know. I've been happy to have you in the house, and you've been a great help to me, and, well, you've taken me daughter off my hands, and any father would be grateful for that. I'll look after it, George. I'm not worried about that, Andy. I know you will. Uh, who's this other girl she's bringing to the house? Pam? Oh, she's a distant cousin. I haven't seen her for years. Oh, well, I think I'll nip off before they come. What for? Oh, I don't know. I feel a bit embarrassed being shown off. You know, the prospective husband being sized up. Oh, you'll get used to it. Mm. <laughs> Uh, uh, too late. Peggy, <laughs> Pam, this is Andy. Mm, you've got possibilities, Mary. Yes, indeed. I think you could do with a little more height, maybe. Yes, he's a bit on the short side. Have you tried him with a moustache? Well, I wish he's on men as a general, but I might try that. That's a good idea. He's got good teeth. Pretty fit, you'd say? Oh, more or less. You quite finished taking them, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> now, I told you what it would be like, didn't I? Uh, hello, Pam. Well, I say, you shut up since I saw you last. She's only five then, Dad. It's not surprising. I don't, it's nice to have you with us, Pam. You too, Piggy. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, girls, I'll show you your room. Oh, in the wedding dress. Oh, yeah, don't forget the wedding dress. You must give that the once over. You're married, aren't you, Pam? No. Oh, I thought I had... Oh, well, I'm sorry. Well, never mind. You'll never be an old maid with your looks, eh? <laughs> oh, Dad, you clot. Don't make any more tactless remarks about Pam and getting married. That fellow walked out on her a week before the wedding. Oh, cracky, you should have told me. I did, but you got a head like a sieve. Walked out, eh? Gives me an idea. You're mm. welcome. <laughs> well, I wonder if she wants to come to a wedding at all with an experience like that behind her. Well, she wrote inviting herself, didn't she? Or so Mary said, anyway. Well, nobody ever tells me anything. When they do, you don't remember. <laughs> Oh, well, everything all quiet at the station, Grace? Yes, more or less, George. Yeah. Oh. Hey, you got them, Sarge? Yeah, are these the ones you meant? The carnation's uh, on the left in the oblong bed. That's right, that's right. Oh, Grace, we're going to slip down for a quick one just down the road. And uh, tell Mary, will you? We look after Andy for her. Mm, I don't think she'll approve. Well, she'll have to do the other thing. My goodness, a fellow's entitled to a night out before his wedding, isn't he? Oh, ooh, rather. It's <laughs> traditional, you know. <laughs> sort of condemned man, you see. The condemned man ate a hearty breakfast. You know, if a fellow took his friend seriously, he'd never get married, never. <laughs> but we are serious. You see, we're married. We know. Oh, all right, come, know. come on. <laughs> oh, they're still admiring the dress. It's beautiful. I'm sure Mary's going to look wonderful. Yes. Yes, I'm sure they make a nice couple. Are you married? No. I've been married once or twice, but never taken the plunge, you know. I was engaged. Yes? He died, you know, in a terrible motorcycle accident two days before the wedding. I had the gown, everything ready. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I've got over it now. But as far as I'm concerned, there'll never be another man. Never. <laughs> How old are you? Twenty-three. That's a bit early to say that. You'll find someone else. Oh, no. 
No, I shan't. Isn't this a sweet garden? May I have a look at it? I adore flowers. Help yourself. Oh, what's that? Which is in the garden. She's a nice girl. A bit strange sometimes, but nice. Yes. Then you told your father that she was engaged to a man who walked out on her. Yeah, that's right. We never talked about it there. Well, I wouldn't be talking about it now. And she's just told me that she was engaged to a man who was killed in a crash. She said that? Uh -huh. Oh, poor kid. I don't think it can be true. I think it's just her way of making up, you know, covering up the real story. Why well, say anything? Oh, well. Oh, oh Grace, I... I hate to admit it, I'm as nervous as a kitten. Well, it's not surprising, really. After all, tomorrow's a big day. Oh, this time tomorrow we'll be in the plane on our way to Paris. Mm -hmm. And you'll be Mrs. Crawford. Oh, Grace, will you do me a favour? Well, you know I will. We'll ring up Dad from time to time to see how he's getting on. He'd rather be a bit miserable, you know. I'll do more than that. I'll take him out one night and buy him a big meal. Thanks. <laughs> Grace, you know how it is. Sometimes when everything is so wonderful and you're feeling so happy, you, you get the feeling that something's bound to go wrong. I can't go on being as lucky as this. That's how I feel now. Oh, nothing will go wrong, Mary. Now then, what about this checking you spoke about? We must get everything sorted out for tomorrow, you know? It's a great day. <laughs> you know, what are you crying for? <laughs> you see what a state I'm in? Then if I cry now, I won't be able to cry tomorrow. <laughs> Anyway, we're we'll just having a couple of snifters. Oh, it's not for you and Mary, it's for us. Well, he can still wait. Well, I just can see how Mary's getting on. Oh, <laughs> women and weddings. Tub is the men. Uh, yeah. Ah, do I look all right? Very pretty. Oh, buttonhole. What about the oh, buttonhole? Right. Here, there you are. Have a look at this from the florist. I've got better ones growing out in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that old Andy's feeling, eh? Oh, well, if he's got any sense, he'll have a couple of these to brace himself. <laughs> That girl, um, what's her name? Uh, Pam, is she going to be a bridesmaid? No, nope, she's a funny kid, that Mary asked her, and she, she cried off. No, she's just going to be one of the ordinary guests. There's Peggy as one bridesmaid, and, uh, oh, Kathleen, yes, that girl from the club, a uh, friend of Mary's from the club. Mm. Mm. Now, watch that, all right. I'll take it. I, uh, uh, grab the bridesmaids and get them off, will you, Tub? It's the sort of job I like, grabbing bridesmaids. Off it. How's my hand? Fine. <laughs> Who is it? It's Tom. Are you ready? Just a minute. I feel terribly nervous. You feel nervous. What about Mary? I don't feel nervous. I feel sad. I hope I don't cry. Well, you better not. This is Mary's day. Don't you spoil it. Oh, I'm sure I shan't do anything to do that. Good. OK, Mr. Barrow. Oh, you're a fine figure of a man. You know, I could marry you. I wouldn't mind myself, but I'm already booked. <laughs> Pity. Come on. Come on, Billy. Didn't you go, what? <laughs> We're off, Mr. Dixon. Oh, thank day. Don't you look pretty. Go on. Come on, girl. Like Come on. Off you go. I know. I shan't keep you, Mr. Dixon, but I'll come along as one of the old Doc Green regulars to sort of... Well, wish happiness on this day of day, see? Thank you very much, Billy. And, uh, as a matter of fact, if I had anything handy at this particular minute, I'd even go so far as to break me pledge, you know, just for this once to drink your health. I thought you were reformed. Oh, but I wouldn't allow my convictions to stand in the way of wishing a good friend good luck. Oh, that wouldn't be Christian behaviour. No, quite well. Anyway, well, uh, help yourself and hurry up, will Thanks, you? Mr. Nick. Thanks, uh, You've got a nice little place there, ain't you, eh? Mm, reminds you of Kippers and... Crumpet spread thick with hot butter and, uh, yeah. you know, crusts of bread with lovely gravy dripping on them. Sort of comfy, homey like. I know, I know. I'll well, get a move on. I'll get that down. We'll well, carry on. Good luck. Ah, may the sun always shine on your back door, Mr. Dixon. 
You know, you're a fine fella and a good copper. I'll never forget that time you took me in in that perishing cold winter when I haven't got a blanket nor a and bed. Look, 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 Billy, my daughter's getting mad at today, and if you don't hurry up... It's... You look lovely, Miss Mary. Just like a white angel coming through them doors. A white angel with a smile as warm as a pile of fire. There's beauty there, Mr. Dixon. Real beauty, inside and out, real beauty. Thank you, Mr. Russell. <laughs> That's I mean it. I've told a million lies in my time, but it's the God's truth I'm speaking now. What's them words out of the Bible? Thou art all fair, my love, there is no spot in thee. Well, I've got to go. Aren't you going to wish me good luck? With all me heart. Properly. <laughs> Mr. Ruffin, uh, we're having a reception later on at the Oxford Room. I'd love it if you could come along and have a drink with us. You don't want an old wreck like me there? Yes, I do. Besides, I ain't got no clothes. A fine sum. Pink sum. Such words coming from a copper. <laughs> well, thank you, my dear. And if I don't come, it won't be because I don't want to be there. That was nice of you, Mary. Oh, Della. I feel so happy. I... Oh, never mind. How do I look? All right? Oh, Billy, put, my, put it much better than I can, love. Oh, the car's waiting. Well, we'd better go. Oh, kiss me first. Well, what about the get-up? Never mind. Well, you know what I think, love. There's no need to say it. Me too, Dave. Thanks. All I've got to do now is to fall flat on my face going up the aisle and the job's done. Eh? <laughs> you should do that. Looks very nice. Very. Good morning, sir, madam. Oh, we just dropped in on our way to the church. Yes, we promised Mr. Dixon we would. Oh, yes. The manageress has just checked it all over. She's very fussy. One chip cup, out it goes. Well, I must say, it all looks very nice, you know. Uh, now, uh, what about the hats and coats and things? Oh, over here, sir. I'm in charge of them. The ladies' room and the gents are down at the end, but they're too small to take all the coats. She's got a nice day for it, hasn't she? Yes. Considering the summer, wonderful. <laughs> now then, Grace, what about us uh, testing some of this liquor, eh, shall we? <laughs> well, George did ask us to say, see that everything was all right. That's right, did it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I shall sample some of the draft bitter. Sherry for me. Yes, madam. I don't know how you drink that stuff, you know. I like something with a bit of body to it. I'd have thought you'd got enough body without wanting to get any more. <laughs> what do you mean? Station sergeant should have a little bit of stomach, you know. Goes with the rank. <laughs> Gets respect. <clears throat> Did you know something? I've seen that girl somewhere. Oh, no, don't I don't know that she was ever in any trouble. I can't be sure. No, can't Except you... that the, the voice and the face are familiar. Can't you remember? No, I can't. Well, once you nip back to the station and flip through the files. Well, I should coco. You'll do oh. it. Hello, you're early. Well, the reception's after the, s the service, you know. I can't face it. I just couldn't, I know. I'd cry or faint or do something and spoil everything. Yeah, will all women cry at weddings? Now, have, have a drink, Pam. Oh, I just put my stole away. Bit of a rum-do, isn't it, eh? <laughs> Good job she wasn't one of the bri bridesmaids. Uh, that would have upset the apple cart, wouldn't mm, it? It's a long story. I'll tell you sometime. I know. There's something about church ceremonies that upsets you. Still, I reckon they're best. Church weddings, I mean. The only good thing about my wedding was the ceremony. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no need to be. We all make mistakes, eh, dear? I'm well out of it. I was engaged. Only on the morning of the wedding, he was killed. Terrible car crash. Awful. That's why I'm not going to the church. I couldn't stand it. Don't wonder at it, dear. Still, I mustn't spoil other people's pleasure, must I? Oh. Here you are, pal. Sherry. Oh, I shouldn't really. It always goes to my head. Oh, one won't do you any harm. Yes, sir, we must be going. We'll be late. Uh, See you later. Yes, be sure to you.
was a darn good dinner, George. Oh, Flint's still in the other room, eating. Well, that didn't prove anything. He'd eat anywhere, any time. <laughs> Come on, Andy, your son's been eating the dirt. Yeah. How about it, Mary? Mrs. Crawford to you. Getting cheeky already, eh, Andy? You must put your foot down, you know. Oh, here comes old Billy. Come on, Billy. The bar will be dry if you don't hurry up. Took a bit of time to rustle and clobber up there. A pleasure for Mrs. Crawford from an old friend of yours with a message. Oh, you shouldn't. Yeah, it's from old Duffy Clayton, Miss. Uh, uh, I mean, beg your pardon, Miss. It's his gramophone record. It's Sibelius number two. Well, that's double dust to me, but uh, he says it's the finest bit of music in the world and he hopes you'll keep on playing it, please. Oh, that's wonderful. Thanks for taking me, will you? Well, I'll shake him by the hand, but I don't think he'd like me to kiss him. <laughs> <laughs> well, where's this liquor? I'm off the place today. I don't want to waste a minute on it. Come on, drink this and don't talk so much. <laughs> Andy, are you going to start the dancing? Madam? Sir? Hello, Oh, you want a younger man than me? Oh, I like my member, too. Oh, you do? Just like you. I don't know what my friends are not green and say, see me off nobbing with the coppers. <laughs> but this is a special day, ain't it? Well, the music's horrible. My dance is hopelessly out of date. But would you do me the honour of having a go? After such a flattering request, what can I say? Of course, Billy. Do you like to dance? No, if you don't mind, I don't really feel like it. Come on. No, really. Excuse me. See me, Frank? Yes, George. Look, look, I don't want to mess up the day. But... Oh, that's all right. Mary and Andy have just gone off to change. They're going to... What, what, what is it, Frank? Well, it's rather serious, I'm afraid. You see, I left my Mac here, and like a clot, I left my wallet in it. There was ten pounds in it, and it's gone. Are you sure you had it? Positive. You see, the wallet had some documents in it, and that made it rather bulky, so I slipped it out of my breast pocket and into the Mac. Well, I assumed it'd be safe. Well, so it should have been. Where is your Mac? Well, it's here. Oh, no. I searched everywhere. Now, look, Frank, you've got to be sure of this. I am sure. Oh, this is a fine lark. This is. Look, I don't want to make a fuss, George, but, well, I can't afford to lose ten pounds. And there was my driving license and all that. Ah, uh, Muriel. Yes, Mrs. Dixon. Have you been on duty here all the time? Well, not all the time. I checked in the coats and things, and then I gave a hand to table. I've never been far away. Why? Well, this gentleman, well, he, he, he's mislaid a wallet, and he, we thought perhaps you might have seen it. No. It wasn't mislaid. It was stolen. Are you accusing me? Now, nobody's accusing anybody. He said... I heard what he said. Now, I think the wallet might have been stolen, but that doesn't mean I think you did it. I should hope not, indeed. The place has been open all the time. People coming and going. How did that get in here? Oh, I left it there for safety. What? You been here, Billy? I have. Is it uh, forbidden territory? You didn't bring an overcoat? For the simple reason that I don't happen to possess one, old chap. Now, what's wrong, George? Uh, shut the doors of any grace, will you? Oh, atmosphere of mystery, eh? Closed doors, atmosphere tense, Dixon serious. Now, now, cut it out, will you, Billy? This is serious. Mr. Meek here had a, had a, had a wallet with ten pounds in it, and it was in his Mac, and now it's missing. Mice. Well... <laughs> Aren't you going to search him, George? Just a minute. Uh, you see, Mr. Dixon, you never did an order invited me here. Your friends don't trust me. A straight question, Billy. Answer it and no more will be said. I know it in advance. Did you take that wallet, Billy? Well? I don't like you, Mr. Mick, and I don't dislike you. I'm neutral in the matter. You inspire neither regard nor contempt. Billy, did you take that wallet? I'm a sound notice of that statement. Well, you won't answer. You're quick on the uptake, ain't you? I'm standing on me dignity, what I got left of it. But I, I'll make a bargain with Mr. Meek. <laughs> I don't make bargains with the likes of you. All the same, I'll put it to you. Dixon, was I invited here or not? Am I a guest or not? You're a guest, Billy. Right. Then I'll say the same question of all the other guests, and I'll answer with them. Search old Lemon, you'll search me. 
Well, aren't you going to stop him, George? He won't get far. Billy didn't take that, George. I'm surprised he should be here at all. Well, I should have thought that your own well, sense... Well, we invited him because we like him, Frank. You saw no one come in here. I saw lots of people. The door was open. You don't expect to find thieves at a wedding. Haven't I seen you before? Not to my knowledge. Unless you worked at the metal case factory. No, I didn't. As a matter of fact, I'm a policewoman. I don't care whether you're the Prime Minister. You've no right now, to come no in here. There's no need to fly off the handle. Well, look, no, look, what do you intend to do? I'm not going to... I'm not, I'm not going to have everybody search and I'm not going to ask any questions and spoil the party. Well, what about my ten pounds? Now, I'll give you your ten pounds, Frank. You won't lose anything. Oh, yes, that's all very well, but I don't intend to let it go like oh, that. neither do I. As soon as this lot's finished, I'm going to go into it. Yes, but if you let all these people go, that chap Billy... For no. but Frank, I've got one daughter. She got married today. I'd rather pay out fifty pounds than have the day spoiled for her. Now, now, will you please do this my way? Yes, yes, of course. Sir. I'm sorry, George. I got a bit carried away. I'll leave it to you. It's all right. You finished with me, Mr. Dick? For the moment, yes, thank you. If you want me, you'll know where to find me. I know where I've seen her. Where? In court. What for? I don't know. I've been trying to think, George. Now, listen, Grace, will you do something for me? Find the manageress and get her full name and anything that else might be useful. Then get onto the station and ask them if they know anything about her. Would you mind doing that? Of course. I'm sorry to mess up your dance. You're doing fine with old Billy. I'm going to I'm perfectly certain about Oh, there you are, George. Come on. The customers are all keeping you on. I'm just going to see Mary and Andy on. George, you've got venture time. Come on. There you are. Go on. Thank you very much. Now, uh, as I said just now in the dining room, we've got some lovely friends and relations here, so I'm going to sing a little song all about some relations you've never heard of. Uh, my old friend there knows the music, eh? Off we go. <laughs> now, I've got relations, aunts and uncles by the score, and a dozen cousins and perhaps a dozen more. They're a funny family, I've no wish to deceive, and I could tell you lots of things you hardly would believe. Now, for instance, Rhoda rode a bike the other day. She had a glass of soda and some cider, so they say, but when Rhoda tried to ride a cider bubble up inside her and combusted with the soda, and so Rhoda... <laughs> 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 that was a brave one, I'm talking. Now, I have a cousin, Florrie, who is sweet as sweet can be. I'm in love with Florrie, sorry Florrie's not with me. Now, Florrie is distinguished for her lovely snow white brow. Florrie flew to Florida, her forehead's horrid now. <laughs> Florrie flew to Florida, she hurried on her own. And we're all very sorry Florrie hurried off alone. And the climate being torrid, disagreed with Florrie's forehead, and now Florrie's forehead's horrid till that horrid. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Paul. I could go on with a lot of other verses of that, but I would like to sing one little song about the relative, the relative that uh, I love best of all. My daughter. Her name is Mary. Mary. Plain as any name could be. And with propriety, society may say, Marie, Mary, Mary, long before the fashions came, that there is something there that sounds so square, it's a grand old Just like us, I want the Mary. Before the fashion came, and there is something there that sounds so square, it's a grand old name. Oh, I was just going to say, don't forget the ticket. You've been reading too many jokes. <laughs> hey, you know, time's getting on. The others ought to be back. We ought to be on our way. Oh, loads of time yet. Yeah. Come in. Yes, sir. Now kiss me here. And here. And here. Hey, 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 come on, hurry up, hurry up. The car will be waiting. Did you speak or did the wind blow? Now hurry up. <laughs> Listen, you'll miss your plane. Here, I'll take the bags out of the car. Well, I don't. Goodbye, love. Take care of yourself. Hey, you're going great, you know that. Well, I'm not surprised looking after you for 23 years. <laughs> now, now you look after yourself. Don't forget to eat. Eat? I'll have the time of my life. Eggs and chips four times a day. <laughs> oh, I wish your mother could have seen you today. Oh, thank you. Well, 
Now, as long as you want to see you in a fortnight. Eh? Oh, Andy. Yeah? All right for cash? Oh, yeah, quite sure. 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 Thanks all the same. Okay. okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, come and see us off, Dad. Oh, yes. Good night, all of us, Henry. Good night. Hello? Hello, who is that? Pam. Oh, it's Grace here. I want to speak to Mr. Dixon. Oh, just a minute. I'll get him. Is for me? Hello, Dixon here. George, listen. I've checked on that girl. Her name is Muriel Barnes. She has two convictions, both of them for shoplifting. Shoplifting? All uh -huh. oh, right. Thanks very much, Grace. I, I say you're coming over here, aren't you? Yes, right away. I'll oh, see you later. Well, it was all very bad, George. Oh, we had a bit of trouble at the uh, at the uh, the party there. Um, old Frank Meek, he lost his wallet. It was pinched. Had ten quid in it. Grace has been just been checking on the girl. Looks after the cloak, and she's been uh, in trouble before. She didn't um, take it. What? It was me. What do you say? I tried to put it back once, but there were other people there. It was one of those terrible impulses. There wasn't no, any don't. reason. It was just an impulse. Everyone was so happy, and, and I felt dead inside me. Dead. I thought if I had the money, I could go away. What, on ten pounds? I told you I didn't think. As soon as I got the wallet, I was frightened. I knew I'd done wrong. I did try to put it back. You can do what you like with me. I don't care. Oh, Pat. Honey, don't try to find a reason. There wasn't any reason in it. Except... Except I was jealous of Mary. And of everything. Well, Sarge? You stole that body chin, you know, You're a thief. I know, I know. She didn't mean to do it. She wasn't responsible. <laughs> but she did try and put it back. I saw her hanging around outside the cloakroom door. Hmm. Well, that doesn't alter the fact, you know. Now, son. Yes, sir? Get this round to Mr. Meek, will you? Tell him it was found behind the radiator in the cloakroom. Tell him to be more careful in future. Uh, don't do it now. Put it in your pocket and do it on your way home. Right, Sarge. Oh, thank you. Don't thank me, Pam. You thank the day. I've only turned a blind eye once or twice in my life. I'm doing it now, not because of you, because of Constable Dixon. I am sorry. It's all right. You won't do it again, will you? Come upstairs, Pam. Thanks, Sarge. Ah, uh, forget it, George. Don't think I'd see your day spoiled just by a, a sloppy, frustrated kid, do you? Oh. Pull him out, Sam. Come on. Here we are. Ah. Uh, place seems different already without Mary, you know. She'll be back, George. They'll both be back. No, I know, but there's something final about your daughter getting married, you know. Especially when she's the only one. I know how you feel, George. She's a lovely kid, Mary. Always has been, right from the nipper. Spitting image of her mother. Spitting image. Well, here's to her, George. Here's to her. Here's, here's to her. her. Yeah, one for me, too. All ready for you. Sorted out that other business, Grace. I'll tell you later. <laughs> well, we've been drinking to Mary and Andy several times today. I'm going to give you another toast. P.C. George Dixon. P.C. George Dixon. George. Thank you. Well, I mustn't mope, I suppose. If she's in good hands. They won't be long before they're back. The place won't seem the same, even so. I wish her mother could have seen her today. What was that Billy said about her? A white angel. A white angel with a smile as warm as a pile of fire. Oh, well, she's going to be all right. I'll go on my own. I'll let this next week. <laughs> yes, next week. I'm, oh, I'm not going away. I'm just going to have a few days fishing on my own, you know. So, won't be long before I see you again. Good night. Good luck. That I love London so. Maybe it's because I'm a Londoner that I think of her wherever I go. Our Brit Cop season continues tonight on BBC Four with the first episode of our brand new series looking at the changing face of TV policing. Call the Cops starts in half an hour's time after another episode of Dixon of Doc Green. Next. I love London Town.